Hi, this is Larry Taylor. We are now at the halfway point of the platform convention of the Democratic Party of Oregon and Salem. Uh, just to recap where we're at, uh, last night we approved the rules and elected officers. It took us two hours. Uh, this morning we had the first of our two breakout sessions where we are uh, considering legislative agenda items to submit to the legislature. And uh, we have another session this afternoon. And then tomorrow we have the plenary session. Uh, as we've talked about earlier, this is the largest um, uh, attendance that we've had in decades to the platform convention. It's approaching 600 people, uh, and apparently they didn't put limits on any of the groups. So I spent the morning in the environmental caucus where there were 120 people. Uh, and it was just amazing how well we all got along and how civil we were and really how in agreement we are in most of our issues and how progressive we are as a party, especially in the environment. Uh, I have a couple of people with me here today that are also delegates. Uh, the first person I'd like to introduce is Sean Nickus. Sean's a resident of Salem and uh, was recently a candidate for commissioner, but had to withdraw. Are you having a good time, Sean? You, you know, really, the main reason that I like to come to these events is because after working on a couple of campaigns, the Bernie campaign and, and a few others, you get to see all your friends. It's actually fun. Um, you get to talk about issues that are, are relevant to people right now but you also get to tell jokes and have lunch. So, you know, I mean, there's, there, it's, uh, it's not, I think, how some people view these kind of things as really policy wonkish and all that kind of thing. It's really about hanging out with your friends and, and having a good time with people who care about a lot of the same issues that you care about. One of the criticisms we often get is that uh, these are the extremists in the party that write the platform, and so we're out in alignment. With, with us doubling the attendance, I don't think that's a valid criticism anymore because with 500 people from across the state, it's a broad spectrum of opinions. We have people here from, from Lake County, which is the farthest away you can get from the Portland metro area. Um, well, I can say for some of the voting we've done today, I don't see it falling along any lines. Most of the voting is near unanimous, and it's... Um you know, a mix of people have been coming to these things for years, and people for this is their first time, and people have been just done it once or twice before. So I really don't, I don't really see any kind of issue where some people are far more radical than other people. Really, everyone's very close to being on the same page, and usually if there is dissent, it's like three people who didn't agree out of a room of 50 or something, which is fine. Nobody hates you for dissenting, so that's easy too. And what was amazing was that the attendance in the Environmental Caucus was, it looked like it was two-thirds new people, first-time attendees, which was just fabulous. Which, which session were you in this morning? I, I was in criminal justice. What was the highlight? Um, I didn't realize that uh, prosecutors are actually paid far more than, de than the uh, public defenders are, and that is one of the issues that, that we actually talked about it, it, during the meeting. Did, did it result in an LAI? It did result in an LAI. I, of course, don't know um, how, you know, at the end we put our little dots next to which LAIs, everyone, and I don't know what the outcome was of which LAIs actually were finally gotten through, but it is one of the LAIs that we definitely passed, and, you know, everybody voted for it to even up the pay between the two, uh, between prosecutors and public defenders. So just to clarify what the process is, we've been collecting legislative agenda items from all over the state for months. And today what we did is we did a final review of them. There were some amendments to some of the LAIs, but then at the very end they were all written up on the, the uh, wall and we were given dots to vote with. And so the top 12 uh, from each of the breakout sessions are the ones that are gonna be put forward. Uh, and uh, if you multiply that times 11, you still get over 100. And so after the convention is over, there'll be a final vote where we'll take the top I think it's around 12 of the of the entire collection, and then those are the ones that we will sit down and have a discussion with the legislature. Thank you so much, Sean. Oh, you're very welcome, and I'm happy to be here. So, good luck on your next campaign. Oh, well, I'm excited. Uh, Shell Swa Cryer replaced me uh, in that campaign, and I am really super excited to have her being running for county commissioner. She's probably a better candidate than me anyway. So, and I'm going to do everything I can to get her elected. Cool. I also have uh, Charles Mon with us today. Charles, are you having fun? Uh, fun's an interesting term. I guess you could <laughs> say I'm having fun. I'm enjoying the interactions with uh, everybody that I know and that I've known through, uh, through Bernie Sanders' campaign and through getting involved in politics at local and state levels that I don't get to see all the time. And it's interesting to see even when we differ in opinion, we can discuss the issues and usually work out a good resolution that satisfies most, most people's ideas. 
And what I've been impressed with this time is uh, it seems like everything is done with much more integrity than previously. I just feel like everyone's being treated equally. Uh, there's no one trying to backdoor stuff. It's been a real pleasure so far for me in this convention in the way that we've been treated as delegates. Yeah, this is my first time as a delegate uh, to the state platform, but I heard some stories about previous ones. <laughs> so I was kind of really nervous going in today, and I was thinking, oh, man, what am I going to be dealing with? And so far, I, I was in um, infrastructure, and, and everybody you know, had discussions. There were some disagreements, but we voted on it. We had our pros and cons, and, and the room voted, and nobody made a, a big deal about it afterwards. It was good. What were the, the top ones that came out of that session? Um, one of the biggest ones is net neutrality. Uh, a lot of people talked about that, and there were several uh, legislative action items on that, and some of them were combined, which was good. Uh, we talked about engagement broadcasting, and that, and that got voted in. Um, I'm not sure how it did on the dots, because I didn't stick around to look, but it, I, 12. <laughs> Apparently there's 12, so that's good. And hopefully that'll move forward, because I think it's important. I think, I think we need to keep an informed public. Absolutely, and I think... Uh, um as the, as the Democratic Party gets younger, we will get more support for that because uh, it, it starts getting into being a, kind of a technical discussion and most people don't understand the benefits that something like that would, would give us. Yeah, yeah. at first, uh, Deborah was like, what's engagement broadcasting? So I, was, I had to raise my hand. I'm like, I can tell you, I can tell you. <laughs> Let me get in the room. <laughs> I, I forgot to jump in the room. I was an idiot, so Charles stood in for me. It was great. <laughs> this is a great thing about being organized. Um, I don't see anyone else that we can grab right now. Anything else you'd like to add about this weekend? Um, I'm a little still a little bit nervous about the next session, so that's uh, health care, basic needs, and gun safety, and I am chair of the Gun Owners Caucus, so I think it's going to be a pretty heated discussion, but I'm hoping that we'll see some of the same you know, understanding and, and listening, and maybe we'll get some good uh, safe ideas put forth. Yeah, and the great thing about the Gun Owners Caucus is that uh, the Democrats are often portrayed as being anti-gun, and that is incorrect. We have a gun owners caucus in the Democratic Party of Oregon, and um, it's more into having the right people own guns and to own guns safely as opposed to taking guns away from everyone, right? Correct. I, I'm, I'm a big advocate for gun safety. I think we need further education, hands-on training, understanding of what you're doing, and less people just buying a gun who have no idea what it is and what it can do. I mean, they, are, they can be dangerous, but only in the wrong hands. So I'm going into the economy session next, and uh, I'm looking forward to what happens there. That's uh, our, our midday update. Thank you so much.